Okay, this is a question about bending in a T-section beam. Um, the beam itself is shown here. Dimensions are 300 millimeters across the top, 300 millimeters uh, on the, this vertical section. Um, I suppose I should just be clear. That's 300 millimeters up to there. Um, 300 millimeters goes across the top, and then the actual um, sections are. 30 millimeters wide. Whenever we start a question like this, one obvious thing to do is just to break the beam up into two rectangles, uh, which I'll do now. There, rectangle uh, one and rectangle two. And the area of rectangle one is, I'll do everything in square meters or in meters and square meters. Um, so that I don't have that to worry about later. So it's 0 0.3, 300 millimeters is 0 0.3 meters times 0 0.03, which is going to be a nine times 10 to the minus three square meters. And the good news is that second area is the same. Um, so that's nice to have. The next thing that I want to do, um, if I just think, uh, the next thing I'm going to want to find is the neutral axis for this beam. So let's draw out the beam again. And this time we're just going to think about uh, where the neutral axis might be. Um, and I guess it is somewhere here. And then each of the two uh, individual parts has a neutral axis. That marked on there is Y1. And that marked on there is Y2. And this is Y bar, the height to the neutral axis. And all of that is from the bottom of the part. Um, this thing of just redrawing the beam uh, fairly regular intervals just to um, focus on the specific thing I'm doing at that point. It's always a good idea. Don't be afraid to do a new sketch just because you've got some previous sketches of things. Um, the next thing that we need is to remember the formula for the neutral axis. Um, that's not on the data sheet uh, and it is that y bar equals a1 y1 plus a2 y2 over y1 plus y2 and um, we can just mark on what these things are y1 well that's halfway up uh, here so that's 150 millimeters which is 0.15 meters y2 is a bit trickier it's all of that 300 millimeters plus half of this sorry I've got some fluff on my pen um, still should be it. Uh, so all of that 300 plus half of this 30. So that's 315 millimeters, which equals 0 0.315 meters. Uh, so now we've got all the bits we need. The answer here is going to be A1 is 9 times 10 to the minus 3 over... Oh, sorry, I've just realized I've written down this formula wrongly. Uh, that should be over a1 plus a2, of course. Um, if nothing else, it would have been dimensionally incorrect before because the left-hand side would have had units of length and the right-hand side would have had units of area. So apologies for that. Um, it's just a slip of the pen or a slip of the brain, perhaps. Anyway, a1 is 9 times 10 to the minus 3. y1 is 0 0.15 plus a2 is 9 times 10 to the minus 3 y2 is 0 0.315 all over a1 plus a2 which is 9 times 10 to the minus 3 plus 9 times 10 to the minus 3 and when we put all of that into a calculator it comes out as 0.2325 meters um, so that's the first result that we needed that's the position of the neutral axis in the part, in the T-beam. 
Um, next thing we need is the parallel axis theorem. I'm going to just switch to a black pen. Um, so I'm starting a new section. I'll change the ink color. Um, so what we need for the parallel axis theorem Again, this isn't in your uh, data sheet, so please remember it. And it says that um, I about the neutral axis for the whole T beam is I for that individual bit. Um, so, for example, uh, the uh, second moment of area of rectangle one about the neutral axis of the whole T beam is the second moment of area of this rectangle about its own neutral axis plus a d squared where d is the distance um, from its own neutral axis to the neutral axis of the t-beam. So we can calculate d. d1 is going to be um, y bar minus y1 which equals 0.2325 minus 0 0.15 which equals just get my calculator back not point naught eight two five meters and d2 sorry about this blue uh, mark that I've accidentally left on my paper there um, but d2 is going to be um, I mean, I, I'm going to write this the other way around just so I get a positive number. It, it's the magnitude that's important, I guess. So we can just do this, y2 minus y bar, um, which equals uh, 0 0.315 minus 0 0.2325, which also equals 0 0.0825 meters. Um, OK, so I1 equals b1 h1 cube divided by 12 that's from the data sheet um, i for a rectangle equals b h cubed divided by 12 and it's on your data sheet plus a1 d1 squared um, the breadth of rectangle 1 is 0 0.3 the height is 0 0.03 uh, divided by 12. A1 is 9 times 10 to the minus 3 and D1 we know is 0 0.0825 um, and that comes out to be sorry this takes a bit of time on the calculate So that comes to be 6.193 times 10 to the minus 5 uh, meters to the 4. I'm just going to go on to a new clean page now and we can go straight on and calculate I2 in much the same way. That's B2 H2 cubed divided by 12 plus uh, A2 D2 squared which equals uh, this time, the, this uh, rectangle 2 is tall and thin, so the breadth is 0 0.03 and the height is 0 0.3 uh, cubed divided by 12 plus uh, 9 times 10 to the minus 3 multiplied by 0 0.0825 squared. I'm just putting this into a calculator. And that comes out to be 1.288 times 10 to the minus 4 uh, meters to the 4. So I for the T beam is the sum of those two values. 
um, and that equals uh, 6.193 times 10 to the minus 5 plus 1.288 times 10 to the minus 4 which comes out to be 1.907 times 10 to the minus 4 meters to the power of 4. Um, so that is kind of a, an overall view of how you calculate the second moment of area of a t-section. Um, that's not our final answer to the question, by the way, but it is at least the, um, the majority of the work done now that we've got that second moment of area. Um, one thing to notice, there's quite a sort of strict process of how we end up doing that. Um, and so first of all, you always find the neutral axis uh, and sometimes you can take advantage of symmetry to spot the neutral axis very quickly, but in something like a T-section you can't do that, and so you just have to calculate it. Um, it was worth calculating all of these areas and things at the start, and then again for T-sections we're going to have to use the parallel axis theorem because we don't have symmetry to rely on, and so we can calculate for each of the rectangles uh, that we divided everything up into, their second moment of area about the new neutral axis and that uses this form here and then we add up the effects of all those rectangles and we get to an overall uh, second moment of area for the t-section. Um, so the question itself, now that we've um, calculated that second moment of area, we're looking at this bending question um, and we're told there's a moment of 100 kilonewton meters and we want to find the bending stresses at these three points A, B and C. Um, so let's just make a note of that, I'll change pen again. Um, so we know moment equals 100,000 newton meters, that's in the question. Um, and then there are these three points A, B and C. What we're going to use in general here is the uh, bending formula which says m over i equals sigma over y. We want to know stresses so we'll be writing sigma equals m y over i. m the moment is fixed, i the uh, second moment of area of the t-beam is fixed and the only thing that's changing is where we are relative to the neutral axis of the t-beam. So we just need to calculate those things. Why A, um, I'm just going to draw the beam out one more time, I think, just to really clarify things, because then I can mark on where A, B, and C are. We know that the neutral axis is um, 0.2325. And in the question, uh, A is here. B is here, and C is sort of in the armpit of the T-beam there. Um, so Y A, the vertical distance to the point A, is 0.2325. Um, y uh, B, the vertical distance to the point B, well, it's the height all the way to B, which is 0.33 minus 0.2325, which equals 0.0975. And then YC is this height here, minus 0.2325, um, which is uh, 0.3 minus 0.2325 which equals 0 0.0675. Uh, just to show you where those are on the diagram, that is YA, that is YC, and that is YB. Okay. Uh, so now we can do three calculations. Sigma A equals uh, MY over I is 100,000 times 0 0.2325 
divided by 1.907 times 10 to the minus 4 uh, and that comes out to be 122 megapascals when you calculate it. Uh, sigma b equals 100,000 times 0 0.0975 over 1.907 times 10 to the minus 4 and that equals 51.5 megapascals and then uh, let's do capitals throughout sigma c equals 100,000 times 0 0.0675 over 1.907 times 10 to the minus 4 and that equals 35.4 megapascals. Um, the last thing we need to think about on that part of the question is whether um, it's tension or compression and we're told that the top of the beam is in tension uh, so uh, this B and C are both going to be in tension everything above the neutral axis is then in tension everything below it is in compression so this is compression tension and tension. Okay, uh, last thing, last part of the question says um, we're allowed that sigma t allow, that's the maximum tensile stress, equals 125 megapascals. Um, and that means that the maximum bending moment, uh, remember that m over i equals sigma over y, that's the bending equation, so m max equals um, sigma max i over y. Uh, max, I guess. Um, what we're seeing really is that the maximum bending moment depends on the maximum bending stress and the maximum bending stress is going to be right out at the extreme. Uh, if you remember the zero stress on the neutral axis and the stress increases as you get further from the neutral axis um, and that maximum bending stress is 125 megapascals. So this is 125 times 10 to the 6 multiplied by I um, 1.907 times 10 to the minus 4 divided by the maximum distance from the neutral axis in tension which is the distance to point B in the previous part of the question right this is in tension and so the maximum distance is going to be um, on a minute. I'm just trying to see what I'm thinking here. Ah yeah, that's fine. Um, so the maximum distance to uh, for the tensile calculation is the distance to point B, which we know is 0 0.0975. And that comes out to be uh, 244 kilonewton meters when you do the calculation. So if the a uh, moment exceeds 244 kilonewton meters, then the bending stress will exceed 125 uh, megapascals. Similarly, we can look at the uh, maximum allowable compressive stress. We know that that's 150 megapascals. And again, we'll have the same equation that the maximum bending moment is the maximum stress times I divided by Y. This time we're looking at the region of the beam that's in compression and so the maximum distance will be this distance a is the point of maximum compression uh, and that length is 0 0.2325 so uh, 150 times 10 to the 6 multiplied by 1.907 times 10 to the minus 4 divided by 0 0.2325 and that then equals uh, 123 kilonewton meters so if the moment is greater than one two three kilonewton meters it will fail in compression 
and if the moment is greater than 244 kilonewton meters it will fail in tension so if we imagine we start with no moment and then we just keep on increasing the moment until something breaks the first thing that's going to break is uh, the at the point a in compression so failure will occur in compression at A when the moment exceeds 123 kilonewton meters. And that is the uh, question. That's the final answer. Um, so I'll just highlight that that's my final answer. Um, and that's how you evaluate uh, bending in girders with um, T sections. Uh, if you're doing something with an I section, that is slightly easier because you can take some advantage of symmetry. And those are the standard sections. I suppose you could also have box sections that you had to evaluate. Um, so you could think about how to do those as well. But these are the principles of finding the second moment of area and then using that to perform bending moment calculations.